So as we talk about precision, we've seen now in class and we've talked about that uh, with any observation that we have, we want to be very precise as well as be very accurate. But the thing is we want to do is accuracy, that's, just, that's uh, you know, how close it is to the, to the true value you could possibly be. We know the true value doesn't exist, so how close to the most probable value is it that we can be? Now it gets to precision. It gets to how do we measure precision? So let's take a look at a graph like this. Let's pretend that right here, this is your mean. Minus 2 is your mean. So I'd ask the question, all right, which one of the, uh, the uh, graph figures right there is the most accurate? Well, the one that's most accurate is the one that goes and is about the mean. So that's the green one right here. All right, but then I'm going to ask you, all right, so which one's most precise? Okay, precision doesn't necessarily, isn't the same thing as accuracy. Precision, to be precise, you don't have to be around the accurate value. It just means it's, it's the amount of repeatability. It's how, how much you can repeat that, uh, that error. Okay, so, uh, so we uh, look at this one now. Now we look at this curve right here, the blue curve. That one is the most precise. may not be the most accurate, but it is the most precise. So then we look at the yellow down here. Well, then this one, obviously, if it's uh, not, uh, uh, you know, closely related about the, the mean of minus 2 right there. So it's neither very precise or at the same time, it's not very accurate. So as we talked about before, when we, uh, in previous slides, we were talking about, uh, you know, to, to, you know, what we're measuring here. We're trying to measure the amount of error that's in there, the amount of random error. We don't measure the random error specifically, but we measure that by measuring what the, where the residuals are, where the residuals sit. Okay, so what we're trying to find is we want to get something that sits around the mean and then has very low residuals. And if it has very low residuals, that means it's going to be a lot more precise. Now the way to talk about and quantify the precision is it's, it's called the standard deviation. Okay, so just to explain what everything means right here, V is your residual. We already talked about what uh, V is, right? The most probable value minus any observation. Okay, so then uh, you're going to take the sum of the squares of every individual residual and of course is the number of observations. And that's how you end up with the standard deviation. It's in a plus or minus um, value is what you're going to end up with. Now, if you take the square of the standard deviation, that's then what's considered the variance. So that's the, that's the mathematical sense of this is what it is, and that's what, uh, that's what we're talking about if uh, we're ever going to com compute or calculate something like that. So in words, here's what your standard deviation is really talking about. It's establishing the limits at which the observations are expected to fall. So within one standard deviation, that's about 68.3%. Uh, uh, if you look at, the, look at the curve, if you look at something like this, and you say right here is the mean. What we're saying is, is that one standard deviation, so plus and then minus standard deviation right here, this is what we're trying to say. 68% of all the observations are going to fall within this area. That's what we're saying is precise. So the greater the standard deviation, the bigger the standard deviation, the less precise it is. The smaller the standard deviation, the more precise it is. So in other words here, so if we took a thousand observations, we're expecting that 683 are going to fall between plus or minus one sigma, which is, uh, which is fall between here and here. So that leaves then another... Uh, you know, 317 observations that fall outside that area. Or another way to read this is with an additional observation that we're going to make 68.3% of the time, it's going to chance, there's going to be a chance that it's going to fall within this certain area. So there's a lot of different ways that you can talk about standard deviation and understand it. But for us, when we're talking about all the observations that we're making, uh, repeating observations and coming up with that, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to minimize, we want the smallest standard deviation possible, which tells us that we're much more precise. And then of course, we want that precision then to be about the mean, the most probable value. So again, here's what we're talking about. And like I said, we can't measure error specifically, but we can use the residual to be able to do so. 
So the further out this graph is, like this right here, the less precise it is. Now if you had something that looks like this, you can see that the residuals, you know, the frame of the residuals right here is least. So that's what we're trying to do. We want all our air to fall within a smaller range and smaller area underneath that curve to help us know that we're making good measurements. Okay, so what we have here is one standard deviation we already talked about. That's 68.3% of the time. So that falls in something just like this. So there's 68.3% of where all measurements are going to be. Zero right here. So this stands for zero standard deviation right there. You know, and this is going to, this normal distribution is about, uh, you know, is about the, the mean right here. Okay, so one standard deviation plus or minus one standard deviation. That's where 68.3% of all your observations are going to fall within that, uh, within that range. Now what we also have then, what's considered to be 50% and 90% uh, and 95% of where all the air is. What this comes into account is, if I want to be very confident that all my observations, 95% of the time, all my observations will be within a certain range. That's a lot of times what's asked and uh, you know, when you're calculating something, you're going to give them, all right, it's this distance plus or minus this at 95% um, interval, uh, error interval. Okay, that, what that's saying is, is that you're not just, you know, confident 68% of the time, you're confident 95% of the time what it is. So to be able to maintain the smallest interval possible, standard deviation then has to be the smallest possible, which is, which is what you're looking for. If you have a large standard deviation, then you're going to have a large and a very wide range of what that, uh, where that error really sits. Okay, so if you look at, uh, look at the 95%, what we're talking about over here, now you're looking at, you know, getting ranges all the way out to here. Somewhere inside this area right here, everything on the inside there. That's what you're looking for. But what you really want is something that looks like this, where your standard deviation is a very, very small value, so that way all that air falls within a very, 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 very small range. So again, what you want is a very small standard deviation. Now, it just depends on what you're looking for. If you want 50% of the error, here's the formula to be able to calculate that. And 90% of the error, there's the formula. And of course, there's a 95% uh, error. This graph over here, this is all this is showing is just kind of random, you know, the, the amounts of areas with, uh, which, uh, which are falling inside there. <clears throat> Here's another graph, and, uh, and what they're calling it is, so here, again, this is the size of the residual, the x, uh, x component along here. And the area that's shaded in here, this is the frequency of occurrence. Again, another way to look at it, another way to read it, another way to understand it. Right? That's the frequency of saying, all right, within one standard deviation, plus or minus, 68.3% of the time, my value is going to fall within there. You know, if this is the size of my residual, I want a very small residual. If the mean is right here, if the most probable value is right there, that's what you want. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. You want the area under the curve. You want the most error to be as close to the mean, the most probable value as possible. And this again is just showing you different areas of where the 90% level is and the 95% error level really sits. And again, just another graph, another, uh, you know, way to, to, to help you about, uh, so down here, these are your error levels of uh, sigma. Okay, one sigma we already talked about. So right here, one sigma as it goes all the way up. Here's the value we're reading at 68.3% of the time. About three sigma. Now you're getting uh, now you're you're 99.7% of the time. Anything beyond right here, anything beyond uh, three sigma, that's generally an observation that falls out way outside the bounds that we would most likely consider that to be a, a mistake. A blunder, blunder detection, if uh, if you will, if you want to talk about that. Okay, uh, remember where we said uh, 1.9599 uh, is the 95% uh, error level? So that's right here. Just underneath the two sigma, and that's where you're coming up with the 95%. So just another different way to be able to take a look at it is to where all that error really sits. 
So remember here, anything beyond three sigma, this is what helps us with our blunder detection or our uh, mistakes. If we hadn't found any mistakes within all our data sets, uh, this is one way to be able to find it. Generally, observations like that are just, they're anomalies or they really are just mistakes. They just, they don't fit the data and they're wrong. And so those are generally ones that you'll take out of, uh, out of your data set. So if you take, uh, let's take a look at a little example right here. Okay, so I take this data set right here. Okay, here are all my observations. Now, one thing too I failed to uh, failed to mention earlier. One way to know that you're doing things right is that uh, when we deal in probability, we say it's equally possible that it could be positive or minus. Equally possible to be able to do so. Now, what that means is, is that when you add up all the residuals, all those residuals should add up to zero. If they don't, then you've done something wrong. So that's uh, that's where you got to be really careful. Okay, so you add up uh, add up all your uh, all your observations and come up with what the mean is. So here's your most probable value, 538.45. Next is calculate the standard deviation. So again, at this table you take right here the sum of the residual squared. So right here, you see right here, each one is squared. You take all those, add them up together to 0 0.0554. Divide that by n minus 1. Well, we've got 10 observations here, so we divide by 9, take the square root, we end up with a plus or minus 0 0.08. So that's your standard deviation. So now if I'm going to ask you, all right, calculate the 50% error level. So let's look at this right here. Something like this. Again, here's your mean. Here then is your 68.3%. Here is standard deviation minus and standard deviation plus. So if I'm talking a smaller, uh, smaller range, yeah, it gets closer to the, uh, to the most probable value when you're talking about that. But to be able to calculate that, all you're doing is 0 0.6745 times the standard deviation, which is then going to give you, let's go ahead and erase these little areas right here. It's going to give you now an area that falls somewhere like this. So there's 50% of, of all the air that sits on your side there. So you see that there's a lot of observations out here that you may be ignoring, that you may be not using, that still may be very valid and very important points. That's why uh, you know it just depends on what level of error, level of confidence you want to be able to do this at. Okay, so the 68% error, we already said what that is. That's your standard deviation. So that's your plus or minus 0 0.08 feet. 90% error. Okay, 1.6449 times the standard deviation is how you come up with that calculation. And then the 95% uh, error is uh, 1.9599 times the standard deviation. So that's how you calculate all the, those, those errors. And again, your goal is to make these values, whether it's the 95, the 90, or the 50%, you want to make those as small as possible, right? And so to do so, the only thing that you can do is this. Make the standard deviation as small as possible. And to make the standard deviation as small as possible, again, you go back. Well, how do you do that? Well, it looks like you need your residuals to be as small as possible. So it all goes back to getting back to what your residual is and to be able to calculate that and, and figure that out as you do all your observations. All right, so now let's talk about the whole range that's expected here. All right, the range would be is you take your most probable value plus or minus whatever the error level is. So the 50% level, 538.45 plus or minus 0.05. So here, now you've got a range within here. Okay, and that's explaining, you know, where all your error is. The 68% level, or just one standard deviation level, 90%, 95% as you go through those calculations. So if you're having any struggles to, to do that, just go back over that example I just showed you beforehand to be able to calculate where the, uh, how to calculate the standard deviation, also how to calculate the error. And this is going to be a standard way how I'm going to display and talk about what the error is. And again, this error here, this is our random error. This is getting, you know, taken care of, hopefully get, take care of all mistakes. If, if not, we still have that blunder detection in there. And then uh, taking care of all systematic errors. This is everything that through you know probability says that there still might be something left in that error. 
And that's how we calculate, and that's what we're saying is what our standard deviation is.